Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting and in this video we're going to walk you through how to use our advanced document numbering tool. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come up to this search bar and search for advanced document numbering and click on the first selection you see here. It will then open you up into our setup screen. So the first thing you'll need to do if you've just downloaded it from our website or from AppSource is generate the demo key which you can do right here. By entering or generating that demo key, what it will do is allow the activation to be complete. It will allow you to access it for 30 days at no charge in order to test it and see if it would be a good fit for your organization. After those free 30 days, we can then give you an activation key here. The options either are a yearly license or a perpetual license. So feel free to reach out to us if you feel that you want to use this longer term after the demo is over. So after the keys have been set up, you will be able to use the advanced document numbering tool in your business central tenant. There are three different sections here that I'll cover. We have sales, purchasing, and transfers currently. Each of these will give you a different set of options for generating document numbers. So if we start with sales, you'll see a handful of things here that say standard BC. In each of these drop downs, you'll see the same options. You'll see year four digit, year five digit, year six digit, and year seven digit. Again, you'll see that on every option here. And basically what this is allowing you to do is for sales quotes, sales orders, sales invoices, sales returns, and sales credit memos, it's allowing you to either use the standard business central number series or document numbering that you currently probably have set up, or the other option is to preface the uh, document number with the year that you're currently in. So right now it's July in 2022. So it would put 22 and then a four digit, five digit, six digit or seven digit number as your sales quote number or any sales document that you have here. So that's kind of the first five options here. And we'll see in purchasing, we have very similar options. So quotes, orders, invoices, returns, and credit memos. Again, you can use standard business central number series functionality, or you can use the five to seven digit number uh, prefaced with the, the year that you're currently in. So allows you to sort documents and view documents in an easier fashion, uh, knowing exactly what year that document was in. Um, and that's kind of the same both on the sales and the purchasing side. So next we have some additional functionality, which I think is, uh, you know, a, a little deeper and a little kind of greater functionality here that we're going to dive into next. So you'll see the activate sales post shipment number. So if this is on, it will then, uh, uh, allow you to use this next drop down. So in this case, uh, it's off, so it would not even recognize this, but if I were to turn it on and then go over to the activate sales post shipment options, you see a few different options here, right? So we have uh, the standard BC, which again is just gonna use standard business central number series functionality. And we also have an order number option as well as an order number plus sequence option. So what the order number option is gonna do is it's gonna take the order number on your sales order and force that the shipment number is the same as the order number. Now, if you have a lot of partial shipments or multiple shipments on an order, here you're gonna wanna do order number plus sequence. What this is gonna do is it's gonna take the order number for the shipment and behind the shipment, if we've got three shipments, it's gonna put 01, 02, 03, and so on so that you can see what the shipment is and see the iterations of multiple shipments on the same order. The next option we have here, which is uh, probably my favorite, is the activate sales post uh, invoice and credit memo number. You can see I have this turned on right now. And under the invoice option, I have order number. What this is gonna allow us to do is two things. From the sales order, it's going to have the sales order and the invoice number post, again, the same, similar to what we saw on shipment, as well as if you have multiple invoices for the same sales order, you can do an order number plus a sequence. Again, that's gonna be an 01, 02, 03, and so on, uh, kind of appended to the end of your uh, invoice number uh, in Business Central. The other thing I really like about this is if you're posting sales invoices, potentially with or without a sales order, what this is going to do is when you post that invoice, the posted invoice number is actually going to say the same as the unposted invoice number. I found that this is a huge benefit. A lot of times, especially if people are doing integrations or just want to look up things, Base Business Central is gonna take the unposted sales uh, invoice number and it's actually gonna change it by default from, a, from an S to a PS number. This allows both of those numbers to stay in sync. So when you're looking at your unposted sales invoice and your posted sales invoice, 
both of those numbers are now the same. And then the final option under sales, again, you'd have to activate this for the next dropdown to be active is the prepay option. So again, if you're using prepayments, uh, this is going to allow you to use that uh, order number as the prepayment number as well, or you can use the order number plus a sequence. So again, to recap on the sales, you can always use standard Business Central functionality. That is simply gonna use the number series you currently have in place. Otherwise, uh, you can choose one of the drop-down options. If there are other options that you think would be beneficial that you're not seeing in any of these drop-downs, please feel free to reach out to us and we can always add uh, additional functions or features into uh, our advanced document numbering setup and extension. So as we continue to go forward, I will collapse the sales here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on purchasing because we will see it's very similar to what we just saw in sales. So again, I already touched on uh, everything on this left-hand column here. The activate purchase post receipt number, if I activate this, will now make this next option active. Again, if I'm looking at receipts, it's gonna take the purchase order number and force that the receipt number is uh, the same, or you can use an order number plus a sequence to uh, sequence those multiple receipts that may be coming in. Uh, on the invoice credit memo uh, number option here, again, if we turn this on and use activate purchase post invoice option, we can use order number or order plus sequence. This is going to make sure that the purchase order number uh, flows over when you post invoices or if you're po posting multiple invoices per purchase order, you're gonna wanna use that sequence. And then finally, again, on the prepayment, we have the options to do order number or order number plus sequence. The final thing we have here is transfers. So if you're uh, using transfers, we got four options here. Well, really two options with a toggle. So if I use the activate transfer post receipt number, then I have options to on my transfer order, when I post the transfer receipt, inherit the transfer order number that it came from. Or again, if you're doing uh, one big transfer order with a lot of transfer receipts, you can use the order number plus sequence to append that 010203 as that order is being received from those transfer orders. And then again, on the uh, shipment, you can do the same thing here. So if I look, I can use standard business central or I can uh, have that shipment from the transfer order come from the transfer order number. Or again, if you're doing multiple shipments, you can use the order number plus sequence option here. So that's a little bit about advanced document numbering. Like I said, if there's anything else you'd like to see in this extension, please feel free to reach out to us. We always love hearing your feedback. In the meantime, we really hope that you enjoy using our extension and that it adds a lot of value to your organization. If you have any feedback, comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Thank you.